reverence for the former General Secretary and Chief Executive of UEFA, Gerhard Eigner. From Germany, he passed away yesterday, aged 80, and they are honouring his memory at the games here at Euro 2024 today. As the players gather around the centre circle, their arms around each other's shoulders, and a big picture of Gerhard Eigner is put up on the big screen here in Leipzig, ahead of this moment's remembrance. If you're just joining us, where have you been? Kylian Mbappe is on the bench after breaking his nose against Austria. So Aurelien Chouameni comes in for him in France's only change. Chouameni just back from injury himself. Exciting youngster Jeremy Frimpong replaces Joey Beerman in the Netherlands only alteration. They have Brian Brobby, Ajax's player of the year, back on the bench. He missed their opener against Poland with injury. So it's the Netherlands against France here in Leipzig at Euro 2024. It will be Memphis Depay of the Netherlands to get us underway. A reminder, victory for either side, season through to the knockout stages with a game to spare. If France win, they win the group as well. So it is Memphis Depay to get us underway here in Leipzig. Virgil van Dijk picks it up and out to the right-hand side and Stefan de Vrij will take you through the lineups in a moment. But Dion Dublin, where will this game be won and lost? You know what, I think it's down to, you know, maybe a mistake or, 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 or lapsing in concentration somewhere. There's so many good players on, they might cancel each other out. But let's just see what the formations are. I think the French have gone, gone into a 4-4-2 with Griezmann, maybe just dropping into the 10 roll, what I expected. We'll see what pans out, Vicky, but I'm looking forward to this. Here is Virgil van Dijk just outside the Netherlands penalty area. The Netherlands playing from right to left in this first half as van Dijk sends it all the way back to Brighton's Bart, Bart Verbruggen. What a moment for him. Number one, just at 21 years of age, only his ninth cap for the Netherlands as they burst down this right-hand side and Frimpons into the penalty area. Early chance for the Netherlands, right across goal it goes. And behind for a corner, Mike Magnon got something on it for France. What a start that almost was for the Dutch and their fans away to our right. Raw their approval, early corner, so close to being 1-0. Yeah, that's just that's just an indication of the pace of Frimpong down that right-hand side. I think he left Hernandez for dead there for pace and he gave him two yards as well, so that's going to be a danger. So corner to be taken from this near side. France of a player down inside the penalty area. So our referee, Anthony Taylor, refereeing his first game at these Euros, is just saying delay to the Dutch when it comes to taking this corner. But Griezmann now back up to his feet and Anthony Taylor jogs to the edge of the penalty area and blows his whistle and the corner almost swept in. But again, he spotted something as Nathan Ake went down, Anthony Taylor, and he's saying no, he's saying no more of that, no more pushing and shoving. Let's get on with it. As finally, <laughs> the third attempt, the Netherlands get the chance to take this corner in from the left-hand side. It's swung into the six-yard box, headed away by France to the edge of the penalty area, and the foul is committed by Simons on Dembele. And France have a free kick just outside their own penalty area. But what a start that almost was for the Dutch. And yeah. Manuel making a big save. Absolutely, yeah. Good save. Frimpong there just on the shoulder of Fernandez. Left him for dead for pace. Down the right-hand side. I mean, the corner that just came in now from um, Memphis to, to Pirates. It's like he was shooting. He went in that quick into a perfect area. Great defender. Great defender. So France have it on halfway now with Angolo Conte back in the France squad. Certainly proving his worth in their opener against Austria as Pomacano sends it out to the left-hand side and Chiumeni. It's laid off by Rabio, but he won't keep possession. And now Schuten can bring it down the right-hand side for the Netherlands, who calmly go all the way back to Bart Verbruggen, who is in goal for them. The back four, Dumfries, De Vrij, Van Dijk and Ake. 
ahead of them Shelton and Rinders with Fringpong, Simons and Gatto supporting Memphis Depay up front. As the Netherlands still in position inside their own half. They go all the way back to Verbruggen. Once more he's closed down by Griezmann and plays it out into the central midfield position and Rinders picks it up. Netherlands over the halfway line now and Memphis Depay dispossessed by Pimacano who has it on halfway for France. Playing from left to right in this first half on Five Live and BBC Sounds as they come down the left hand side. France has turned to get into the area with Rabio in the bright pink boots delayed on the edge of the penalty area as Griezmann fires the shot in and it needed is saving. Decent stop by Verbruggen. France corner nil nil we've only played four minutes and i think <laughs> this has set the tempo for this game it is frenetic it is yeah it's, it's i mean it's back and forth left and right all the time it's like a game of tennis i mean the pace i mean um up the corner there just coming out of defense and using his strength and just starting that move off great bit of um, vision from dembele seeing the run of griezmann behind him on his blind side good save from the keeper though and they take this corner short france and the netherlands only have one defender out here at the moment Never thinking by Griezmann as Angola Conte, not known for his goal scoring, <laughs> to shoot by some French fans, but they swing it in instead through Griezmann. Wearing the captain's armband with Kylian Mbappe on the bench with that broken nose and that master match as Griezmann swings it in again, headed away by the Dutch skipper Liverpool's Virgil van Dijk and Dumfries will bring it out to the right-hand side and here goes Xavi Simons over the halfway line in the orange boots, matching not quite the brightness of that all-orange Netherlands kit as Gakpo loses out to Jules Koundé over on this near side and France win the throw. So France with Magnon in goal. He's already made a big save from Frimpong, early doors. The back four of Koundé, Apermecano, Saliba preferred to Ibrahim Akanate once again and Hernandez. Ahead of them it's Chouamene, Conte and Rabio with Dembele and Griezmann supporting Churam up front. But as Dion has said, it's fluid. For France at the moment, Griezmann is in that number 10 role. Dembele's out on this right hand side and Rabio out on the left. So at the moment, Conte and Chiumeni sitting a little bit deeper and France taking up this 4 2 3 1 position. They can switch into a 4 3 3 as the Dutch fans away to our right raise their voices. Several fans clad in orange and with a football bucket hat to match as well stand up in front of us. As Virgil van Dijk heads the ball away from inside his own penalty area. Out to the right-hand side come France now and Dembele plays it forward to Angolo Kante. Now back to Koundé, takes a touch and swings the ball in right footed. Van Dijk's there again, edge of his six-yard box and clears away for a throw to France. Six minutes gone, it's nil-nil and I'll tell you what, you're not going to get away with that Koundé, trying to take it midway through the Dutch half and really the <laughs> ball went out near the halfway line. Anthony Taylor is better than that. Yeah, he doesn't miss much, Anthony Taylor. Here they go again, though. Here goes Abby Simons. This is a really bright start from the Dutch. They've stolen it on halfway, but defending by Pimicano. And France will bring it forward. Here is Kunde on the right-hand side and steers it back to William Saliba. And now forward to Chiuameni. Exchanges passes with Rabio and France just settling inside their own half. They have a very good recent record to France against the Dutch. They have won seven of their last eight meetings, including two victories in the European qualifiers. One of them was a 4-0 thrashing. Mental advantage, perhaps, or does all that go out the window, Dion, yeah. when it comes to tournament football as France have it inside their own area? Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think that goes out the window. Vicky, to be honest, game like... <coughs> excuse me, a game like tonight is so important just to feel your way in. I mean, just down in front of us here, you've got Dembele against Ake, that's a, a mouth-watering duel. Dembele looks like he's on it tonight. There's going to be something coming down this right-hand side for France. I can guarantee you that. It looks good. Ball goes out of play for a Dutch throw, and lovely turn by Memphis Depay, wearing a white bandage around his head as he races through the France half. And now Frimpong has it. Plays it back to Denzel Dumfries, and now Schuten once again. Rhine just picks it up. And the blue boots, stinks it forward, a little layoff by Depay, almost runs for Simons, he does get there inside the area, a little challenge by Conte, Depay then went down, referee Anthony Taylor says no penalty 
And France will bring it away on that far side with Hernandez. It's played forward by Shelton once again. Headed back by Chiumeni to William Saliba right on the edge of his own penalty area. Didn't do Saliba many favours there. And then Griezmann has gone down. And that time the whistle does go. And it's a free kick to France. But the Dutch may still be asking about that penalty appeal, Zion. Yeah, you know what? I'm just looking at a replay and it was Saliba. It was a lovely little turn as well from Depay. Sort of used his body, eased Saliba into the side where the ball was. And he was in. He may have been held back. He may have been held back. Well, we do have VAR. They're happy it wasn't a clear and obvious error. And Griezmann plays it back to Saliba. Stuart Atwell is the VAR today for this huge clash in Group C between the Netherlands and France. A win will take either side through to the last 16. France win, they'll go through as group winners as well after Austria beat Poland by three goals to one. Elsewhere at the Euros today, Ukraine getting their first victory 2-1 over Slovakia as Teo Hernandez comes down the left-hand side for France. Griezmann picks it up now. Chiram won't get there in the penalty area, but it's given away by Frimpong. Poor ball by him, but he does well. Wins it back from Teo Hernandez, and here goes Memphis Depay. Midway through his own half, he had options bursting through the centre, and Cody Gappo was one of them centrally. He goes left instead to Nathan Ake, and Cody Gappo was furious with that. Made a good run, was hoping to play off the shoulder of the France defence, but... They went left instead, but here they come now over the halfway line with Reinders and Gakpo will pick it up just outside the area. Memphis Depay tries to latch onto it. A Pumacano gets his foot in and France clear away, but the Dutch are just looking dazzling in attack at the moment, Dion. Yeah, but they, they seem to be moving really quickly through the thirds, getting players forward. Here is Reinders, central position, 25 yards out for Netherlands. Now Dumfries picks it up on the right-hand side. They're attacking the... Ends behind which the France supporters are camped, although we can see a few orange shirts dotted in amongst them. And that in to our left as Schouten picks it up and sends it all the way back to Stefan de Vrij. And now Schouten once again out to the right-hand side. Plays it forward, Denzel Dumfries will chase up against Teo Hernandez. First battle between those two, Dumfries with the looping ball all the way across the penalty area. The little flicked backwards header by Kunde, and it's out for a touch. So they're on top at the moment, Dion. Yeah, they are, they are. They're, they're playing really well. I mean, the runs of Cody Gakpo and Memphis Depay have been really good as well. The defence of that, those white shirts for France. There's kind of big gaps in between those uh, defensive lines and the gaps are a little bit too big and those orange shirts are finding the gaps at the moment. Dion Dublin here with us on Five Live and BBC Sounds as the Netherlands have the ball just inside their own half. You can watch this match on BBC One as well. Steve Wilson and Jermaine Genius, your commentary team. If you'd like to, you can sync up our commentary if you select the option through the BBC iPlayer or the red button as we're Bruggen. The Netherlands goalkeeper has it just inside his own penalty area. Plays it out to Virgil van Dijk. And now Stefan de Vrij out to the right-hand side. And Denzel Dumfries. And now Frimpong on the halfway line. Plays it back to Schouten. And Dumfries has continued his run. And is a judge to have committed the foul there over on the far side on William Saliba. But doesn't really protest there, Denzel Dumfries. No, but... no. He did. He, did. he, sort of, he, bar he barged. Um, I think it might have been Saliba in the back there. Just trying to get a, 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 a sort of edge on him there. I think with um, the pace of Fringpong and the pace of Gakpo, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold the two fullbacks back into a defensive line. Lovely bit of skill by Usman Dembele on this right-hand side for France as he comes into a central position. And now Griezmann has the option of Teo Hernandez and uses it on the left-hand side. Griezmann wants more. The way he fizzes the ball around is just beautiful. Lovely one-two with Hernandez. And it's all the way back with two many just inside the Dutch half and the orange shirts now drop back into that defensive position and Ronald Koeman stands just in front of that row of Dutch substitutes won the Euros as a player with the Netherlands their only major tournament triumph in their history Didier Deschamps as well as won it with France in his playing career as France had the ball just inside the Netherlands half Deschamps in fact looking to become the first person to win the World Cup and the Euros as a player and a manager. Says it's not a motivation for him, but my word, wouldn't it be an accolade? France with the ball into the area, good header away by Reins as you come back to get there just ahead of Griezmann. And the ball goes out of play for a France throw. Nil-nil, 12 minutes have flown by yeah, here in Leipzig. They have, I think Reins is just keeping an eye on Griezmann. Wherever Griezmann goes, that 14 
orange 14 shirt of Ryan as he's there in front of Griezmann, making sure that he doesn't create anything or pick out one of those passes. So every time he looks over his shoulder, Griezmann, Ryan as he's there. Here is Chouameni for France as they work it back to the halfway line and out to the right once more with Dembele up against Nathan Ake. He's done really well there. Will be picked up by Kunde, who swings the ball in. It's cleared away by the Netherlands outside the penalty area, but only as far as Dembele now. And Rabiot, 25 yards out on the angle. Lovely little back here. We'll find Rabiot once again. Squares it, creates and gets his feet in the muddle and can't squeeze the ball home. How have France not scored there? It was an absolutely gorgeous move, beautiful skill, and a player as experienced as Antoine Griezmann has simply fallen over on the edge of the six-yard box and hasn't been able to get the ball out from under his feet and stick it away as France have it midway through the Dutch half. Dion thoughts in a moment, but here goes N'Golo Conte into the penalty area. Griezmann again and steers it wide. Ten yards out. What a 60 seconds he's had, Dion. What is going on? Rabio? I mean, not the chance we've just seen, which was um, Griezmann just putting one... I mean, Kante does great on this second chance and Griezmann tries to steer it in the near post. That's just, honestly, I'm looking at the, I'm, I'm watching the, the first chance. Rabio is six yards out. He's got the keeper to beat and he plays it to Griezmann. Yes, Griezmann didn't get his feet sorted out. You don't pass it there. You're six yards out. You put the ball in the back of the net. Talk about it afterwards. I don't think Griezmann was expecting it, to be honest with you, Vicky. Yeah, you're right, Dion. It is a big call from Rabio, not to go for goal himself. And Ake takes this throw for the Dutch on the near side. You're not normally as a striker saying any opportunity to score. Thank you very much for setting me up there. Isn't that being a bit ungrateful to you? Yes, yeah. You know what? Six yards out, I'm not passing to anyone. Eight yards out, ten yards out, I'm not passing to anybody. He's got to really put his team ahead there. He did so well. And he's eight yards out, six yards out. Just pass it in the corner. That's why you're you and Rabio is Rabio. <laughs> as the ball goes all the way back to Verbruggen. Nil-nil, huge opportunity though for France to take the lead. As Van Dijk has it midway through the Dutch half. Out to the left-hand side now and Nathan Ake plays it back to Van Dijk once more. And he sends it forward to Schouten. They're just slowing the play down now, the Dutch. Perhaps a little bit rattled by the way that France carved them open there inside their own penalty area. 15 minutes gone here on Five Live and BBC Sounds, here in Leipzig. And the noise and the singing and the chanting has not stopped for a single second as Van Dijk has it midway through the Netherlands half. As Kelly mentioned earlier, the Dutch fans have completed their traditional orange march to the stadium. They were making a real noise, setting off smoke flares in the square right by a hotel in Leipzig earlier. And they're coming down the left-hand side with Cody Gakpo. Good run this is, urge to shoot, does shoot, and it's saved by Mannion. Pushes it behind for a Dutch corner. Yeah, great save, Mannion. They had to watch that one because Cody Gakpo actually dropped his left shoulder, came inside, and he's just where he wants to be. 18, 20 yards outside the box, and he just tries to call it to that far, that far post. And you know what made, makes it difficult for the keeper? It bounces just in front of the keeper. He gets a good top hand on it, puts it around the corner. Great save. 16 minutes gone, nil-nil. As the Dutch have a corner on this far side, Memphis Depay prepares to take it. Ake's on the move inside the penalty area. It's looped in by Depay, it's poor. It's over the head of everybody. It will be collected by their central midfielder, Reinders. And now Jeremy Fringpong has it once more as Shelton picks it up on the halfway line and Frimpong all the way back to Park for Bruggen. Shelton and Reinders, very important players for the Netherlands at this tournament. They're missing a couple of key central midfielders, the likes of Frankie de Jong turned Coop Miners. He's had a brilliant season with Atalanta as France of a free kick midway inside their own half. Martin de Rhone as well, the former Middlesbrough man. All injuries before the tournament. They knew they'd have to cope with them, but big opportunities for Tijani Reinders. Jördi Schouten, such big names missing as Kunde has it on this near side for France. Still goalless as Saliba plays it forward and square now to Apumacano, who wasn't quite expecting that, does look up and lovely touch by Conte in the middle. Nice little one-two with Griezmann. Conte, though, runs into shout and does keep hold of it, and Griezmann will send it out to the left-hand side, and Teo Hernandez, bodies arriving inside the area. Teo Hernandez fires it off his arch-rival, arch-nemesis, the club level, Denzel Dumfries. 
and it goes behind. What are you Brown's staring corner. up? What are you staring up? You honestly, yeah. you're terrible. Keep bringing that one up, don't you? Like that one. It's a great story. <laughs> I love a rivalry in football. We got into it pre-match. We'll try and get into it again if you're just joining us for commentary here in Leipzig. But basically, they play for the counterpart Milan's in Italy. They've both got sent off in the Milan derby after a bit of an altercation, and they are big rivals. There's more to it than that. Let's see if we get time to get into it. As France send this corner in, it's cleared away by Stefan de Vrij. And France will pick it up on this right-hand side. And Rabiot, though, won't keep it in. Big cheers from the Dutch fans all the way to our right. And Nathan Ake prepares to take this throw for the Netherlands. 18 and a half minutes gone. It's goalless here in Leipzig. Kylian Mbappe on the bench for France after breaking his nose against Austria. And if you head to BBC Sounds, you can check out a special six-part series that delves into Mbappe's rise to global stardom. Sporting giants, Kylian Mbappe, easiest way to find it. Search for M M Mbappe on BBC Sounds or on the iPlayer as well, where you can watch all six episodes. Will he play some part here in Leipzig this evening? If France win here against the Netherlands, they win the group as well. If the Netherlands win, they're just through to the last 16. The winners of the group still up for grabs, but that would be the ideal, wouldn't it, for Didier Deschamps? Try and get ahead, see out the victory, and then you don't even have to play Mbappe in their final group game. You can just start thinking about the knockout stages as group winners. Here is Conte, midway through the Dutch half, driving towards the penalty area. He's been doing that well in these opening 20 minutes or so, but the Netherlands get a foot in. Simons, though, can't bring the ball away. And it's all the way through with Mike Magnon, although it would have been <laughs> Dio Pumacano, <laughs> even though Magnon had come peering out of his penalty area, said, actually, I'll take charge. Thank you very much. And does that. You get back in your box, keeper. <laughs> Do as you're told. The big centre-half's coming in. Germany has the ball, sends it out to the left-hand side. And Teo Hernandez, here is William Saliba. Bit of a surprise starter, really, at these Euros. Saliba. Yeah, but he's taking yeah, his chance. Yeah, he, he is, and he's, he's he's some player, by the way. What a season he had as well. I mean, he came into his own um, in the Premier League, and I think um, the manager's seen that and thought, listen, there's, there's no real gamble putting him in. He is that good. He's in good form. So, yeah, here's your chance, kid. He's on the ball now, lays it off to Griezmann. Yes, the first outfield player to play every single second of a Premier League campaign for Arsenal this season. Has struggled to convince Deschamps at international level, but not at these Euros. As France come away down this left-hand side once more. Nice ball finds Rabiot, who swings the ball across. And it goes behind, and Anthony Taylor points for a goal kick to the Dutch. So... 21 minutes gone here in Leipzig in this clash between two of the all-time European heavyweights. How would you assess it so far? Yeah, it's, it's not... I mean, both sides have done OK on the ball. Nobody's really in that final third. Nobody's done anything special to create something for their side. Um, the the, the matchups are good. I'm liking um, the, uh, Griezmann in there as well. He's being followed all over the place, by the way, by Reinders. Uh, I, doubt, I mean, I'd like to see Frimpong down the right hand side stay further forward but I just it's not found his feet yet this one here comes De Vrij out to the left hand side almost over the head of Kunde, but he does well and hits the ball back to Mike Magnon who has made a big save in the opening seconds from Jeremy Frimpong bursting down the right hand side the Dutch attacker who can fill that more defensive role as well playing it right back right wing back right wing as he is today and at the other end, Verbruggen has been called into action a couple of times as well. But the biggest chance of France, Rabiot and Griezmann getting themselves in a muddle as the ball goes out of play. Javi Simons will see it roll out for a throng. France throw as their fans all in unison as if on cue rise and wave those chickalors behind the goal that the Dutch are attacking. The reds, white and blue, the vertical red, white and blue, rather than the horizontal red, white and blue of the Netherlands. Although it's a sea of orange with a few national flags as well. Away to our right here in Leipzig as the ball goes out of play for a Dutch throw a third of the way inside the France half. Yes. Dion Dublin. Have you noticed to the left where the, um, the France fans are, there's a little pocket of um, orange. Yeah, there's about 12, 20 shirts, all orange there. You've got to keep the noise down if you score, though. I was going to say, we're, we're watching them now as the Dutch prepare to take 
this free kick just on the left hand side third of the way inside the France half they're standing with their arms folded they are behaving very well are. so far as the trickle doors wave around them in that sea of blue it's almost like an orange life boy bobbing in the Atlantic as Memphis Supply swings this ball in and the header at the far post is behind yeah. it was a tight yeah. angle for Denzel Dumfries and he sends it behind for yeah, a France goal kick nil-nil wasn't a great uh, free kick from um um, Memphis Depay. I'd like to see him in the box as well. I don't really want to see their best sort of goal scorer out here taking the uh, taking the free kicks. I like him in and around the box, so there's a danger. Um, it's, you're making it easier for the uh, for the French defenders, to be honest with you. Manion, the goalkeeper, all in black with the bright green gloves and white orange tipped boots on his heel, sends it out to the left hand side. Won't be kept in by Teo Hernandez. And the ball's out of play for a throw to the Dutch right in front of their manager, Ronald Koeman, as we see, I'm sure, something that will not be our last shot of Kylian Mbappe on the bench with that broken nose, not wearing the face mask at the moment, obviously no point when you're <laughs> sitting on the bench. <laughs> as Frimpong has it over on the far side, the Dutch have won a free kick for a foul on Memphis Depay, and Anthony Taylor says he just took that a little bit quickly, and so they'll take it again just inside the France half. If we think about the absence of Mbappe so far, in this game, Dion, how much would you say it's affected what France are, are trying to do? Well, I, I think they'd probably play the same way, but they'd be playing more balls in behind because of his pace. I think that's clear to see. Whistle goes, free kick for France. Shout and punished midway inside their own half. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be a bit more of an even game in regards, you know, Mbappe not playing. And um, the defence, I mean, Virgil van Dijk's holding a very, very high line. I don't think he'd be holding that high line if Mbappe was playing. So I was speaking to Mario before about that. Are they going to change the way they defend, where they defend, because he's not playing? Ball goes out of play for a France throw as their fans raise their voices once again. We talked about the Dutch march to the stadium here in Leipzig. Saw shots as well. We were well in position, of course, always early. But shots of the France fans marching to the stadium as well as we were driving here, actually. There were a huge crowd of them around a the car chanting Allez le Bleu. They have packed out Leipzig in the blue of France and the orange of the Netherlands. And so far here on Five Live and BBC Sounds, it is goalless as Dortmund fall there for Kunde. Anthony Taylor will let it go as the Dutch break forward and Kunde not involved in this defence. Can the Dutch take advantage? Here is Cody Gakpo. They did the penalty area, played it behind Memphis Depay. Wrong decision, chance wasted, France goal kick, and Jules Koundé is still down inside the Dutch half. That yeah. could have been controversial had that ended up in a Dutch goal. Yeah, I just think it was a it was a challenge, I think, and it just comes down off the challenge quite high. Simons gets up high, lands funny on his sort of hip. Full force from a very high vantage point, and then Gakpo goes forward, he's got another chance in that same sort of shooting area he had a shot from earlier in the game where sort of waste it there was runners all around who didn't use anything at all lift your head up try and pick a pass well he is up to his feet Jules Koundé playing it right back for France today as he does so often for Barcelona he does say he prefers playing at centre half but when he played at the level that he has for Barcelona in that position it's of course something that Didier Deschamps can call upon a few worries even at a level as high as this nil-nil between Netherlands and France here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Magnon plays the ball up towards halfway. Headed straight back towards the France penalty area. So Libra is there and intercepts and Griezmann will now play it out to the left-hand side. And Rabio back to Griezmann once more. Rabio's continued his run. Good defending by Denzel Dumfries. Gets the interception in and plays it forward to Jeremy Fringpong. And now Jürgen Schalten squares it to Tijani Reinders. And once more the Dutch sweep forward and are roared forward by their fans jumping up in front of us and waving their arms forward towards that France penalty area behind which the trickle rules are waving once more as Reinders takes a shot and Hernandez with the deflection will carefully see that all the way through to the France goalkeeper Mike Magnon. Yeah, Reinders is just winding up the shot and he's 20, 20 yards out and who comes out of nowhere, Kante blocks the shot, goes into his keeper's hands and he, and he, and he nullifies another danger. Way Here offside. Comes France. Offside flag stays down for now. And the chance is missed by Marcus Turam. And the offside flag stayed down. 
Interesting on this. Let's have a look again. Oh, he's on. I thought he was well off. That's Dion. what I said. I said way on side. Did I say way off? I'm oh, sorry. I thought you meant. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it was a great run, and that is a huge opportunity that's gone begging there for Marcus Turan playing through the middle. 15 goals for Inter Milan this season. He's the son of the World Cup winner back in 1998, Lillian Turan. Hugely decorated France international, certainly runs in the family. What an opportunity. The run was perfect, the finish was awful. Two best chances in the game. Two best chances. Again, he's eight yards on the angle, he goes for power. All you got to do is steer it towards the keeper's feet, make him make a save. Really, really poor decision making. Yet France have had the better chances in this game and it's to their own discredit that they haven't taken them rather than anything that the Netherlands defence or Mark Verbruggen have done particularly spectacularly goalless 29 minutes gone here on 5 Live and BBC Sounds a reminder this game is also on BBC One you can watch that with our colleague Steve Wilson and Jermaine Genus or if you'd like to you can sync up our commentary just choose that option through the BBC iPlayer and red button as Saliba picks it up Midway inside his own half. Squares it now to Dio Pomecano and now Chiuameni. Forward now to Kunde, who's moving freely after landing awkwardly a couple of moments ago. And Pomecano has it back once more. I just feel that this is slowing down to the pace that I think France want to play at this pace. I think Netherlands want to play at a faster pace. Well, France are happy just to pick out Griezmann in that number 10 role and make things happen through the thirds. Griezmann wins the free kick, much to the frustration of the orange-clad fans in the stadium here in Leipzig. And France have the ball on the halfway line. Dink forwards. Chiram, who's just missed that glorious opportunity on the angle, goes down. And this time the whistle doesn't go from referee Anthony Taylor. Reinders has it for the Dutch, still just inside his own half. Plays it back to Virgil van Dijk as Bryson Spark for Bruggen gestures towards his defence. Good to see that confidence from a goalkeeper when he's still just yeah. 21 years of age. Yeah, he's organising them, telling them where to go, telling them where the ball should go. They've all got their backs to him. I'm not sure they can hear him <laughs> or pay attention, but good to see. Listen, you can always hear the keeper, whether you turn around and speak to him or not. That's another matter. On, on the whole, they talk a lot of rubbish. <laughs> Dion Dublin. Friend of keepers here with us on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Chiram almost intercepted from De Vry. Might get another chance as well, but the ball forward to him as he made that run was poor. And it is all the way through with the aforementioned Bart Verbruggen. Nil nil here, half an hour gone in Leipzig as W. Simons picks it up. Over the halfway line he goes for the Dutch. Out to the left hand side and Cody Gakpo, who's looked lively around the penalty area. Memphis Depay won't reach it though. Good sliding challenge at the back by Pimicano. And here goes Griezmann over the halfway line as he brought down there by Shelton. Yes, he was. And Anthony Taylor goes to his pocket. And Yerdy Shelton is into the book. Yeah, just strong. Being very, very strong there. Griezmann couldn't get away. He's not on the pace anymore. And Shelton there just grabbing onto his right shoulder or left shoulder, should I say. Just pulling him back, pulling him back. Just gets a bit of his shirt as well, and Griezmann has to go down. Yellow card. Is it going to be a, a good yellow card? That's what we say. Good yellow card, mate. Well done. He was on the halfway line, Griezmann, but was driving forward and shouting whether he thought he could get away with the foul without the yellow. It was borderline, but you can see why Anthony Taylor gave it. So the ball is out to the left-hand side, and Teo Hernandez in field to Chiuameni. Aren't enjoying a spell of possession. Here is Conte, always on the turn, always looking to go forward. Plays it out to the left-hand side, and Teo Hernandez once again, and Chiuameni back to William Saliba. And now forward once more to Rabiot. France just inside the Dutch half. The white shirts moving forward, but Memphis Depay will dispossess Rabiot, who looks at Anthony Taylor and raises his hands, but Depay comes forward, plays it out to the right-hand side. Won't be reached by... Jeremy Frimpong and Griezmann make sure that he can't pick it up at the second attempt. Few loose passes yes. from the Dutch recently. Yeah, Depay there is, is, is bursting forward and he's got three players, got three good options and he picks the wrong one, tries to go for Frimpong, Frimpong, his mark, Gapo to the left was free, Simmons was going down the front as well, chose the wrong one and the execution of the pass was poor as well. Yep, just not quite clicking at the moment for the Dutch going forward. Still goalless 
here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Conte picks it up outside the centre circle. And for Meccano, has it now. Sends it forward to Chiumeni. It will make its way forward to Dembele. Chiram through the centre. Well dispossessed. That's a brilliant interception by Virgil van Dijk. Just took it off the toes of Ousmane Dembele. And the Netherlands will come forward now with Nathan Ake. Hasn't really had the opportunity or the desire so far to get forward. It's been about defending and staying in that left-back position, but now it does go forward, but the Dutch once more slow it down. Do you get the sense that both of these sides are playing with a little bit of fear of their yeah, opponents? maybe a little bit of caution, making sure they don't make the mistake that's going to uh, hinder their progression. I like, I like a faster game. I think both these sides, we used to call it hand on and play, put the hand on the ball, play quickly, get it forward and then start doing the damage up the top. The Dutch in possession with Dumfries, just inside the France half, but he opts to go back once again to Stefan de Vrij. As Virgil van Dijk is an option, but de Vrij goes for the run of Cody Gakpo through the centre, just couldn't get a touch on it on the edge of the penalty area. And it bounces all the way through to Mike Magnon. Fine margins there for Gakpo. <laughs> He needed um, his right leg to be another another foot longer, and he was in. Great little run. He came from the left hand, the left hand side. He went across two players. Lovely little, little, lovely little run on side as well. The ball was great. He just couldn't get his right toe on it, but he was close. France with the ball just inside their own half. Yeah, it's quite fluid at the moment. This Netherlands forward line. Memphis surprise come out to the left. Gakpo through the centre at the moment. Javi Simons. In the attacking 10, and Frimpong coming down this right-hand side into the penalty area he goes. Good block, combination of Saliba and Chouameni. But Frimpong again looking dangerous down that right. And a Dutch fan in front of us who is clad in orange with an <laughs> orange, another orange shirt. He's wearing an orange shirt and he's got an orange shirt wrapped around his neck as well. Not that you need it, it is sweltering inside the stadium here in Leipzig. But he enjoyed that because when Frimpong gets going, it has been few and far between in this game, but he almost scored in the opening seconds and just there he showed a glimpse of what he can do, Jeremy Frimpong. Yeah, he's, um, he's, been, he's been a bit too deep for me, Frimpong. He's, uh, he's on the toes of Dumfries. Here we go. And here they go once again, Javi Simons approaching the penalty area. Went for the daisy cutter and it's straight into the arms of Mike Magnon. I think he actually tried to put that in the top corner, but it ended up being a bit of a daisy cutter, to be honest with you, from Simons. Again, it, 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 I think it was um, Kunde he took the ball off and he, he went and he got to the edge of the box and he tried the, the correct finish, but he just got it all wrong. Memphis Depay was beside, beside him as well. There was another option there. I think it's the final third that's letting both these teams down at the moment. And that is why we're still goalless on Five Live and BBC Sounds here in Leipzig. Good strength though by Churam. Was he brought down there? Yes, he was. Anthony Taylor's whistle goes. Throw in. Oh, throw in. Oh, I thought that was a free kick there. So did, <laughs> so did Churam. Well, it's a clumsy challenge from Stefan de Vries. Is that the least we can say about it, Dion? Yeah, it's good to see, though, two players going to ground and the referee not automatically giving a free kick one way or another or a yellow card. He just says, throw in, play on. So France have this throw over on the far side. Plenty of whistles around the stadium, but not Anthony Taylor's on that occasion. France have lost it, that's sloppy. And Teo Hernandez and the Netherlands are coming forward. Shelton play it now to Rinders over the halfway line. Here is Javi Simons. Saw a bit of space for Depay. He's now on the right-hand side. Here he goes, Memphis Depay. Early ball into the area. Saliba got in the way. And Teo Hernandez will get there and should be able to clear away from Jeremy Frimpong. And does so. De Vrij is there with Chiram once again. Chiram goes down. No free kick given. And again, France not too happy with that. And the ball is all the way back on halfway with Virgil van Dijk. Eight minutes to go until half-time. And yeah. it's still goalless between Netherlands and France. Yeah, in the, the great battle, by the way, Trulam and De Vrij. They're in each other's pockets. They're head to head, chest to chest. They're not moving. They're not. Nobody's backing out of that one. Oh, the Netherlands have given it away just inside the France half, and here goes Trulam, racing towards the penalty area. Oh, he was brought down there, surely. Yes, he was. And that's going to be a free kick. And this will be further punishment, you feel, because he was in a great position there. De Vrij just let the leg dangle. Let's see if Anthony Taylor is going to give the yellow card. I mean, if you're going to give one for Shelton on Griezmann on the halfway line, surely you've got to yeah, give maybe. one there? Yeah, maybe that was um, just a lazy leg there, to be honest with you. De Vrij got done with a bit of skill from Turan. He's gone by him and 
He's just dangled his leg out there and he's gone over on it. This is a dangerous position with the quality of Griezmann with his left foot. Going to just curl it into that area. See what happens, get the big boys on the end of it. So Griezmann is over this. Teo Hernandez is there as well. It's just shy of 30 yards out, just in between the left hand's corner of the penalty area and the edge of the D. Splits the difference between those pretty perfectly. So Griezmann in the orange boot stands over this for France as they look for the breakthrough. It's swung in, it's powerfully headed away by Virgil van Dijk using every inch of that formidable height, the Liverpool man. And then cleared straight out of play by France for a Netherlands throw. Nil-nil. France have been a bit sloppy, I think, in, in, in possession. Some uh, wayward passes. And uh, they're forcing themselves um, back and into defensive position when they've got really good control possession. And they just seem to be a little bit sloppy. They're getting caught in possession as well. It's getting taken off their toes by a very hard-working Netherlands side at the moment. But it's just that end product for both of these sides. Nathan Ake takes the throw up to Memphis Depay, using a real tussle with Koundé. He's done well, Depay, but not with that ball. Played it straight to Turan. They keep doing this, the Dutch. They can't keep giving it away. Can France punish them? Dembele, right-hand side of the area, blocked away by Shelton. Back to Dembele. Still right-hand side of the box. There goes down right on the edge of the box, and that's a free kick right on the edge of the penalty area. Virgil van Dijk wags his finger at Anthony Taylor, but he's not to be moved, the English referee. And France have a set-piece in a great position, and Van Dijk needs to be a little bit careful here. As captain, he's entitled to have a conversation, yeah. but no yellow so far. Wow, what do we think, Dion? Yeah, free kick for me. Um, there's not a lot in it, there's no pain involved. He kicks the bottom of Dembele's boot. This is on the corner of the box as France go forward on the right-hand side. It's about two or three yards away from the 18-yard line as well. You've got Dembele, who's the left-footer, Griezmann, who's the left-footer as well. This is in a really dangerous position. This is definitely shootable. Yeah, big opportunity here for France as the dangling camera just moves away. It was almost so close at one point that I think Griezmann could have jumped up and, and touched that. <laughs> I think he waved to his mum. <laughs> <laughs> so, Griezmann and Dembele standing over this free kick for France. As Dion says, it's in a great position. It's 20 yards out. Bang smack middle in of the right corner of the penalty area and the right edge of the D. They've got to go for goal from here. They've got a two white shirted France wall, a four shirted orange Netherlands wall just behind that. So France with the opportunity to take the lead here on the stroke of half time. It's Griezmann straight into the wall, which does its job. It's Van Dijk again with the lead. It's yeah. a France corner, it's nil-nil. Four man wall did their job. There was no draft excluder on this occasion and they still all jumped incredibly high, did their job, headed it away for a corner. So huge cheers and boos and things being thrown at Griezmann. That is not what we want to see from the Netherlands fans. And now, look, one person's done it and now more people are doing it and Griezmann is taking the cup. He's thrown it gently to the feet of one of the cameramen and they're still throwing things. Anthony Taylor needs to come over and do something about this. Griezmann again is coming back. He's saying to the fans, he's got both hands out, saying, look, just stop it. He's moved another cup away. It's very calm from Griezmann. Now he whips the corner in. Poor delivery. Headed away on the edge of the six-yard box by Cody Gakpo. And that, that's a problem for the officials because, look, we love the atmosphere inside here. We love the exuberance and the enthusiasm that these fans have been bringing both to Leipzig as a city and inside the stadium. But as soon as one person chucks a deal and then three, four follow and it's just it's not fair it's not funny it's not clever just don't no exactly i mean it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't no aggression in it. they thought it was funny it's not funny you know keep your cups and keep your beer in the stands come watch the game enjoy yourself i mean griezmann was absolutely fantastic then by the way just picked it up basically said listen can we just get on with the game please um and don't get yourself thrown out you know <laughs> people have saved up to come to this huge competition don't waste your money by getting thrown out enjoy it it's a great occasion and you come to see your country play Three minutes to go until half-time as France come down the left-hand side once again. Teo Hernandez up against De Vrij, tried to chip it into the box. De Vrij does well and clears away. It's picked up by Chiuameni. Now swung in and Griezmann's in there and the header is straight into the arms of Barker Bruggen. Yeah, he's not known for his head in Griezmann. I've got to say, I mean, it's a great ball and Griezmann gets himself in a lovely position, but he's 16 yards out, level the near post. No chance he's going to beat the keeper. So, Barker Bruggen 
takes his time, the 21-year-old, and sends it out to the edge of the penalty area. Nil-nil here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. A reminder, you can watch this match on BBC One. You can sync up our commentary if you would like to. Do you download the Football Daily from BBC Sounds for all the reaction to you today at the Euros. Earlier in this group, Austria beating Poland by three goals to one. And Ukraine in Group E getting their first win against Slovakia. Group E looking incredibly tasty now. We'll have commentary. Belgium against Romania, eight o'clock tomorrow night in that group. Georgia against the Czech Republic gets things underway at two o'clock, followed by Turkey against Portugal at five. The football just keeps on coming from Germany here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as the Netherlands have the ball midway through their own half. They now advance towards the halfway line, but again, Dion, we talk about the caution that at times these yeah. sides are play with. You, you get the sense that the Dutch in possession right now, just in the back of their minds, let's not concede before half time. Absolutely, and what they do as well, because they commit so many orange shirts forward that they cannot really afford to, to lose it in really bad areas because they've committed so many players forward. Basically, right now, they're in the middle of the pitch. They've got a throw on the halfway line on the opposite side in front of the dugouts, and they've got four orange shirts against four defenders. It's, it's the way they play, but you cannot afford to give the ball away. They're in possession once more, the Netherlands, as they play the ball out to the left-hand side. They are such a strong side defensively, although they weren't against France in the qualifiers. Oh, surely that's a handball there by Ake. It has eventually been spotted by Anthony Taylor. Dembele was screaming for it. The assistant on the near side, right in front of us, here in the Leipzig <laughs> Stadium, didn't flag for anything but it was clear wasn't it he just grabbed it and possibly possibly <laughs> not every handball is a yellow but that was so intentional could have been put there okay? I just picked it up and put it in a place where he wanted it <laughs> no problem at all yes clear as day he knew it as well yeah it was one of those you're almost repositioning it for a free <laughs> kick because Manny on the France goalkeeper has it just outside his own penalty area and I think again now France are in possession we're seeing the same thing they are a little cautious of going all guns blazing before half-time as the trickle laws, a few lone trickle laws way behind that goal that Magnon and France are defending as lovely overhead clearance from Gakpo. It's dinked forward by Xavi Simons and Denzel Dumfries hadn't made the run as we enter one minute of out of time. I think from the games I've done so far here, that's definitely the least out of time that we've had at the end of the first half, Dion. Yeah, it's about right though, isn't it? Because the, the, the ball has been in play most of the time. A couple of short stoppages. Well, it's been all right. The football's been okay. It's only going to get better. There's too many sends it over the halfway line. I mean, there is skill, there is quality, undeniably on show, but you also have two sides that are wary of opening up and knowing that they're opening up against an opponent who can take full advantage. Second in the world against seventh in the world. France have won this competition twice. The Netherlands just the once. It's their only major trophy in their history, the Netherlands. A win for either side would take them through to the last 16. If France win tonight, it'll be tonight as group winners as they come down the left-hand side. And Anthony Taylor has had enough. Half-time here in Leipzig. Nil-nil between Netherlands and France. Dion Dublin. I, I think it's, it's an OK game. There's so much more on offer and we haven't seen all of the flair and all of the, the skill and the, um, and the talent that's on show. Hasn't reared his head yet. Hopefully in the second half, it'll come out of that tunnel. But... Honours even at half-time is about right. The final thirds of both both teams have got to be so much better. And I'm sure a lot of the talk throughout half-time around the stadium and from you listening to us at home and watching on BBC One will be about just how fit is Kylian Mbappe. He's on the bench, he's got that protective mask. How much of a part can he play and will France turn to him? Let's see in the second half. But at half-time here in Leipzig, it's Netherlands nil, France nil. Yeah, you'd have to think that France would have to be under pressure if they were going to bring on Kylian Mbappe in the, the second half of this game. Dion, you said it's OK this game, it's fine. I've really enjoyed it. What am I seeing that you're not getting out of this game? I, I just think there's, there's certain players haven't really contributed in, in this first half. Lots of lovely little football in the middle of the pitch, but in the final third, the, the, the last pass has been wrong. France have had two unbelievable chances eight yards out. They haven't taken them. The finish has been poor. I expect more from two nations like this. And I'd like the uh, PA to be turned down just a little bit, please. Thank you. <laughs> oh, just thanks just for, for all of our nerves. That, for would, that would work really well. Mario Melchior has also been watching the, the first half. Mario, what did you make of it? 
No, I thought two teams. I mean, of course, um, we knew what the France team was going to be like. And you could see the Dutch, there was some, uh, we were cautious, very cautious. Why we were cautious? Because we were kind of worried about the, the counter-attack. Regardless if Mbappe is not playing, they still have a team out there. And the intelligence, what we talked about, Griezmann, when he dropping off and, you know, um, Turan coming into as a striker and sometimes Rabiot going beyond. But what is the key thing for Holland to break France down? They have to be careful because Simons is playing a lot of, spending a lot of energy and trying to defend because they were pressing them so high, trying to win the ball back. When he wins the ball back, he almost doesn't have the power to do something. So the first 20 minutes was dangerous because, you know, for, for um, Rabiot to pass to Griezmann that moment, oh my God, <laughs> I was, was happy that he did that because that was not was a right doing? choice. What was he doing passing six yeah. yards out? It's <laughs> <Yeah, squish. laughs> This was an extraordinary decision and, and probably the two best chances of the first half, almost certainly the two best chances of the first half, have fallen to France. There's been some really lovely play from the Netherlands uh, around the, the France box, but they've been giving it away a lot in midfield, particularly as well, Mario. Yeah, but that's why I said, you know what, what the thing is, uh, what's very uh, important, it's, you know, when you, when you spend a lot of energy to win the ball back, you need an outlet. And because the pie is not really being an outlet for Holland, they're now struggling and see, like, where can they open up? I think Gakpo came inside. We talked about it, what he did, uh, you know, coming from the left inside, what he did for PSV before uh, he joined Liverpool. We could see that moment where he, where he crossed them and it was a good save. But away from that, I think they need to uh, um, create a little bit more danger so France pushes back a little more. If you don't push, if you don't push them back, they will keep going. And there is one moment they're going to crack you because they have the speed to do it. And I hope Holland doesn't lose the energy because the second half is going to be even harder for Holland if they keep playing like this. Mario, good to talk to you as always. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the first half here in Leipzig where it is Netherlands nil. France nil will be back for the second half very shortly. And we'll round up the rest of the day's sports news after the BBC News with Nick Hatfield. The voice of the UK. And the home of the Euros and the general election 2024. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Good evening, Nigel Farage says the West provoked the war in Ukraine because of EU and NATO expansion. The Reform UK leader has also confirmed that in the past he'd said he admired Vladimir Putin as a political operator but disliked him as a person. You can see Nick Robinson's full panorama interview with Nigel Farage on the BBC iPlayer. The police commissioner for Northamptonshire has called for tougher vetting procedures after the county's chief constable was sacked for lying about his career in the Navy. A misconduct hearing found that Nick Adley falsely implied he fought in the Falklands War even though he was just 15 at the time. A jury has found a public schoolboy guilty of the attempted murder of two other students and a teacher in Devon. The 17-year-old attacked them with hammers at Blundell School in Tiverton. The NHS is verifying hundreds of documents containing highly sensitive patient information which were published on the dark web after a cyber attack. The group behind the hacking are demanding money. And two Just Stop Oil activists have been charged after private jets at Stansted Airport were sprayed with orange paint yesterday. They're accused of criminal damage, aggravated trespass and interfering with national infrastructure. The team sheets are in and it's quite a lineup they've gone with here. Kyle Walker and Micah Richards, Lineker, Savage, Chapman, Shearer, Kate, Bamford, Sutton, Crossman, Rooney and Mbappe. This is just getting silly now. From Match of the Day Top 10, you'll never beat Kyle Walker and the Football Daily, Five Live has the perfect lineup of podcasts to accompany the Euros. It's an absolute Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Kelly Kitts. Euro 2024 Deutschland. Hello, you join us in Leipzig where it's Netherlands nil, France nil at half time in their Group D match. We'll bring you the second half of that very shortly. In the same group, Poland are on the brink of exiting the tournament. They were beaten 3 1 by Austria earlier today. Also today at the Euros, Ukraine beat Slovakia 2-1. They came from a goal down to do it. And after the game, Ukraine manager Sergei Rebrov said his team has done their country proud. I cannot say we, we did very bad against Romania. Yeah, we lost in some components and very important. But I cannot say this is the different team. But today I think that was different spirit. I'm pleased for the players that they show really a spirit of Ukraine on the pitch and we deserve this win. We, we have a very young team. 
And on this level, they didn't play on this level with the full stadium, with 75,000, and sometimes mental is very hard. But in football, it's happened. Sometimes you can, you can be losing one game, but for the second, as I said, we have to be concentrated and show the other level of the spirit. And I think today players were more concentrated. I cannot say in first game they didn't understood why they are here and who they are representing. Uh, the people who is now fighting for the freedom, not only Ukraine or all Europe. Today that was very important um, win for our country, for Ukraine, for our fighters, for our supporters. And I'm sure today they were proud with the with the players. Now, the other thing that result does is it leaves Belgium bottom of Group E. They've only played one game so far and they played Romania tomorrow. If Belgium win that, then all four teams in Group E will be on three points going into the final round of matches, which, remember, are played at exactly the same time. To cricket now, England's hopes of reaching the T20 World Cup semi-finals are in the balance after they lost the final over thriller against South Africa by seven runs. Henry Moran's been in St Lucia to watch that one. Well, here at a now empty Darren Sammy cricket ground uh, in the north of St Lucia, England will be back at their hotel feeling a bit frustrated. South Africa winning a game by seven runs. England looked like they were out of the picture, then required 25 runs from 18 balls, but couldn't quite get over the line. So it is now one win and one defeat uh, in their side of the Super 8's draw. And Stephen Finn, uh, Ashes winning England fast bowler, uh, was part of the, the Test match special team. Do you think England will feel that this is an opportunity missed or they did well to get to the position where they could have won? Uh, I think they'll feel as though they took part in a very entertaining game of cricket. It toed and froed the in, the entire game right from the very beginning. It, it ebbed and flowed um, because the pitch wasn't quite as good as we thought it might be given the matches that we'd seen here previously. We presumed it would be really high scoring but yeah I, I think certainly they'll feel as though they snatched defeat from the jaws of victory with three overs left. They needed 25 from 18 deliveries and some good bowling and some good fielding by the captain Markram um, that left South Africa on the correct side of the result. England have struggled for wickets in the power play overs in this tournament. South Africa got off to a flyer, 63 without loss after six overs. Is this becoming a worrying pattern, do you think? Well, the two games they've lost, the opposition have had good power plays. Australia against them got 74 from the power play. And here there was a 22-run swing between the two teams after the six overs or the first six overs of their two innings. So, yeah, the, taking wickets is clearly the best way to stifle runs through those first six overs. Let's hear from the England camp. Then I spoke to the skipper, Joss Butler, after play. Disappointed to lose the game. Uh, I thought it was a, a really good game of cricket. Lots of ebbs and flows. Um, I think the difference really was De Kock in the power play. I thought he played really well and um, the power play was probably the best time to score and we couldn't quite maximise the use of that and, um, and De Kock certainly did. Was that because the surface didn't quite behave as, as we all expected, I think, having seen other games here? Yeah, maybe a day game. It's a bit drier and a bit, bit slower. I think it, it certainly played a little bit like that. I thought the bowling performance, I said, after the first six, we were outstanding. The way we restricted them to, to 160 and it was probably about par, I thought. Um, so we were confident of chasing it down. Uh, but I thought they, they bowled well in the power play, didn't let us to get away. And um, you know, credit to Brooke and Livingston for getting it so close. And, and then, you know, like I say, the ebbs and flows, you probably look like favourites at that point. But on that kind of wicket, it's never quite as simple as that. And then the USA up next, which is going to be on an unusual, a new fixture for you guys. And it's a fixture that you're looking at now and you've got to approach, I suppose, like the Namibia and Amman games where net run rate, all those considerations come in. Yeah, we just have to try and win the game. And, um, you know, that's, we haven't played against the USA before, so looking forward to that. Um, yeah, but um, the game's come thick and fast, so you dust yourself down and go again. Do you feel just finally that you're getting proper cricket now after the bitty group stage? It feels a little bit more like a proper tournament for you. Yeah, it does. Um, like I say, games are coming thick and fast and um, had a, a great game against the West Indies. Another good game today. Shame we couldn't win the game, but uh, yeah, we're still in it and we look forward to the next one. He seemed pretty relaxed, I thought. Finney, he, he will be very aware that they go into the game against USA knowing that they can win big. And yeah, there is the potential that uh, there'll be three teams on the same number of points in the group. But England's net run rate position is OK because they've only lost narrowly in this game. Yeah, I think they'll be feeling a lot calmer after this one than they have done previously in the tournament. Um, uh, look, I, it's not a completely perilous position because um, all being well, 
there should be at least three te- or two teams on four points, isn't it? And they'll, you know, it's going to be run rate that will determine whether they go through or not, even if West Indies beat South Africa. So, um, yeah, but look, I, I think he'll be enthused by some of the parts of today's play and he'll also know that there are a few bits to work on. But I think on the whole, having played in a tight game like this, there's, there's a bit more to be positive about than we've seen previously. And England have shown with the likes of Harry Brooks scoring runs, playing really nicely today. His uh, uh, his total of 53 from 37 was a standout performance. That, that actually they're getting contributions up and down the batting lineup. Last match, it was Sultan Bairstow today. Brooks scoring the runs. Livingston useful 33. Yeah, it's important that the contributions aren't just coming from one or two players that are winning games because then if they fail, the team's heads go down and the whole team fails. But if those contributions are coming from different players and different people are hitting form at, at different times and, and hopefully dovetailing as they come through the tournament to try and put the perfect performances together when you hit that knockout stage at the semi-finals. And the final, the way that Harry Brook played today and his versatility and his ability to read game situations is something that should help England in that middle order. So the other two teams in England's side of the draw are USA and West Indies. They play in the early hours of Saturday morning. Then England's crunch game in Barbados against the USA is uh, Sunday afternoon UK time with our coverage here on Five Live Sports, Sports Extra, as well as BBC Sounds. Then after that, the game between West Indies and South Africa to determine things for England. It's straightforward, really. Win and win as big as possible and hope the rest is taken care of. Thank you very much to Stephen Finn. Defeat for England here in St Lucia against South Africa. And thank you to you as well, Henry. Just to remind you that as well as all the live coverage, the latest TMS podcast will be available later this evening via BBC Sounds. Coming up on Five Sports Extra, the second half commentary of Leeds Rhinos against Lee Leopards in Rugby Super League. At halftime, Leeds are 12-0 up. But it's been a really emotional night. There have been tributes to Leeds Rhinos legend Rob Burrow ahead of the match in the club's first home game since his death earlier this month. Everton have released a statement to confirm that the Friedkin Group has been granted a period of exclusivity to buy the majority shareholding in the Premier League club. Everton have said all parties will now work together to conclude this process. In the meantime, the club will continue to operate as normal. Bayern Munich is set to sign Crystal Palace winger Michael Elise. He's chosen the Bundesliga side over Chelsea. Wales are searching for a new manager after sacking Rob Page after the nation's uh, failure to qualify for the Euros. Scotland defender Kieran Tierney has been ruled out of the rest of the Euros with injury. We've got commentary of their must-win final group game against Hungary. That's 8 o'clock on Sunday on 5 Live in BBC Sounds. There's full build-up from 7 o'clock, but we'll be looking to that one um, over the next few days and all day on Sunday as well. And Andy Murray is due to have a procedure on his back just nine days before Wimbledon begins. He was forced to retire with injury from Queen's on Wednesday. So Euro 2024 continues on Five Live Sport. This evening it's Netherlands against France, live from Leipzig. Goalless at halftime. The Netherlands side just making their way out onto the pitch. France side just a couple of moments behind them. The Netherlands will be kicking into the the side of the ground or the end of the ground that has their own supporters. It is a wall of orange off to our right, over to the left. Mainly France supporters waving their tricolours with just a smattering uh, of orange in amongst them. So France making their way out onto the pitch. The second half about to get underway any moment now. And your commentary team here in Leipzig, Dion Dublin and Vicky Sparks. Thank you very much, Kelly. And the camera, as those players came out a couple of minutes ago, has only been following one man, Kylian Mbappe, came out before the rest of the France players. He's made his way to those red seats in the France dugout here in Leipzig Stadium. And he is sitting there with a very pensive look on his face. And that's it, isn't it, Dion? As France prepared to get us underway in this second half. No changes at half-time, so Mbappe is still on the bench. We don't know how fit he is. No. You know, the fact that he's on the bench, that in and of itself could be mind games from Didier yeah, Deschamps, who kept saying, you know, he's moving in the right direction for, for him to play. It's yet to be seen. And again, the camera finds that man once more as France get us underway in the second half. So goal is here in Leipzig. A win for either side would take them through to the last 16 with a game to spare. If France win, they will secure winning the group as well this evening that after Austria beat Poland 
earlier today. So France in position in the white shirts, the blue shorts and the white socks playing from right to left in this second half. The Netherlands all in orange and it's France in possession. We'll take you through the lineups in a moment. But if Mbappe does have half an hour or so in him, Dion, you think it's a no-brainer that he will come on? Yeah, I think so, because I think Mario mentioned it as well. He's, he's not lost any fitness. He's just got, you know, a sore nose. He's broken his nose and he's, 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 he's had it put back in place. And it's all a little bit sore. So I don't think it's going to affect his football at all. Just his mindset, just his um, breathing. But listen, when you're a, a situation like this one and you're needed, you've got to step up to the plate. They're waiting to see if they do need him or not. They have the ball on the far side, France. They almost kick it straight out of play. If Mercano has had to race back into his own half and collect that ball and squares it to Arsenal's William Saliba. So France still just inside their own half. The Netherlands have Verbruggen, Brighton in goal. The back four of Dumfries, De Vrij, Van Dijk and Ake. Ahead of them, Shelton and Reinders with Frimpong, Simons and Gakpo supporting Depay up front. But it's a very fluid Netherlands forward line at the moment though that's how they're lining up as France burst down this right hand side oh, it was a brilliant run but the final touch was just a little bit too strong from Dembele and it's behind for a Netherlands goal kick so France with Manion in goal the back four of Koundé, Epemecano, Saliba and Hernandez ahead of them Chouameni and Conte with Dembele, Rabiot and Griezmann supporting Chiram up front but again that France midfield can sometimes be a three and occasionally Griezmann will get further forward as well to support that attack as Shelton has it loses it hits the back of his heel and here goes Rabio. crosses the ball into the centre it's cleared away by Reinders but picked up by Griezmann and now N'Golo Conte out to the left hand side and Teo Hernandez now Griezmann once more wearing the captain's armband tonight in the absence of Mbappe Will he make an appearance in Buffet from the bench as Rabiot has it? Midway through the Netherlands half on the left-hand side. Goal is here on Five Live and BBC Sound. You can watch this match on BBC One as well with our commentary team of Steve Wilson and Jermaine Genus. If you'd like to, you can sync up with our commentary as well. Just choose that option by the iPlayer or the BBC Red button as Chouameni has it in the centre for France. Out to the left-hand side he goes. And now Teo Hernandez closed down by... Jeremy Frimpong and William Saliba now picks it up again. It's calm, it's cautious from France. Yeah, it is. And in what they're doing, actually, Griezmann is actually leaving the centre of the pitch. There's a big hole in the centre of the pitch where there's no white shirts, no French players at all. They're just trying to force this, um, this Netherlands side to come out of their shape and they're not getting sucked in at the moment. So it's very patient from France. And the Netherlands are having to stay in their shape. Here goes William Saliba over the halfway line. Forward now to Angolo Conte, who plays it out to the left-hand side. And Rabio in the pink boots, he won't keep it in, and the ball goes out of play for a Netherlands throw. Deep in their own territory. Goal is here as Kylian Mbappe watches on. They haven't played a major tournament match without Kylian Mbappe, France, since the final of Euro 2016. That was before Mbappe made his debut. So since making his debut, he has featured in, not played 90 minutes, but featured in every single major tournament game. And the France fans behind the goal away to our left with a few trickle oars waving as the Netherlands win another throw and advance a few yards further up their own half. We'll be desperate to see him come on. But I suppose you have to think about the rest of the tournament as well. And if there is any yeah. question over whether he's not quite ready to play, whether he could do further damage and rule himself completely out, then that's, of course, another consideration from Deschamps. Think, Ideally, yeah, yeah. they get a goal, they win the game, they've won the group, and he doesn't have to play in the third game either against Poland. That's 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 the, uh, the dream scenario for France. Get over the line without him. And then, um, you know, it's just about his, where's his mind, it's his mindset in regards playing the game again. Will he be frightened of getting a knock on it? Of course he will, but you've got, to, you've got to really get rid of all those thoughts and just, you know, if you needed to get over the white line, go and do your job. I'm pretty sure he will, and he will affect the game if he does come on. So, five minutes gone in this second half, and it's still goalless between Netherlands and France. As France, once again, played around their own half. Here is Chouameni, closed down by... Jeremy Fringpong and now up for Meccano. Goes down himself by Cody Gakpo. It's sent by Saliba. Lovely ball out to the 
right hand side and now Kunde down the right for France whips the ball in cleared away by Virgil van Dijk only to the edge of the area France might be able to get the shot away here with Dembele does so it's blocked on the edge of the box and picked up by Javi Simons played forward now to Memphis Depay nice little layoff to this right hand side just created a bit of space for Frimpong who created that space himself and twisted away from the white shirt of Angolo Conte but Conte then closes him down and so Denzel Dumfries goes all the way back to the Brugge and what do you think both managers would have said to their sides at half time Dean? well they would have said listen it's all about doing exactly what you've done in the first half I just need you to be a little bit more clinical here goes Frimpong ball into the area looking for the run of Denzel Dumfries who does commit the foul as he tried to win that ball away from the Pinacano huge cheers and roars of frustration from the orange wall behind that goal Good run from Dumfries, Upamecano down, France yeah. free kick. I think he just stepped on Upamecano's foot there. Yeah, he just gets there second, Dumfries. Great covering though from Upamecano. His, his, his teammate, his centre-half partner went in tight, so he has to come in behind. His pace and his power gets there first. Well, he had an eventful game, Upamecano, when these sides met in qualifying, the 4 0 victory for France. He scored, also conceded a penalty for handball, which was saved from Memphis Depay by Mike Magnon. But the Netherlands certainly a different proposition. It's been an even game. France have wasted a couple of huge chances. Magnon's been called into action as well. France's opportunities, really, they'll be kicking themselves as N'Golo Conte comes forward now, just outside the penalty area, goes for goal, high over the bar. As we say, he's not known for his goal scoring, N'Golo Conte, just two for his national side. But what a resurgence it's been for him. His Absolutely. first appearance in two years in their penultimate friendly against Luxembourg. Really struggled with injury towards the end of his time at Chelsea, including missing the World Cup in 2022, but has played regularly this season and at 33 years of age was the surprise inclusion in the France squad Didier Deschamps saying I'm convinced the team will be stronger with Conte the ball is all the way back with Verbrugge and he was so good against Austria how would you rate his performance in this game Dion? Well Dion thoughts on that in a moment because the Netherlands are sweeping forward down this left hand side here goes Gakpo lays it off Reinders urged to shoot instead plays it to Frimpong and Anders just gets the foot in and it's cleared away and shouts and will pick it up for the Dutch and steer it back to Van Dijk in the centre circle yeah, uh, yeah but about Conte you listen he'll get into most Premier League sides now I think in that holding role he's, he's that good even, even at his age he's, he's done everything he can do everything and he does the things that the other players don't want to do the dirty work and he's good at it and doesn't want plaudits for it and he's won everything nice work by the Netherlands down the left hand side here is Nathan Ake pulls it back to Memphis Depay and Ake has it once more the Manchester City man see that's that's really frustrating as a centre forward you get yourself into a crossing position and they don't cross it it's because the person on the left hand side is a right footer it's as simple as that you've got to at some stage go around the outside and create something here goes Javi Simons oh has he got down there yes he was fouled by Usman Dembele and the Netherlands have a free kick. Good position this central, 25 yards out. Yeah, there'll be a there'll be a, a, a queue of players here. I mean, this Memphis Depay that's got the ball in his hand, just looking at the free kick again. Dembele just gets in behind Simons. This is interesting. This there's something there's something going on here. There's a little off the training ground free kick coming up. I think. There's a lot of pointing going on, isn't there? You go over there. You wasn't there in training. Go over there. <laughs> that's not your spot. That's my spot. Yeah, and Frimpong and Shouten are having a bit of a shouting match as well. They're the two players not involved. They're back midway through the France half to prevent the counter. France have everybody behind the ball here. Memphis Depay has this. It's a little further than 25 yards out, maybe 27 or so. Looks as though he's going to go for goal. Let's see if they do try something from the training ground here. It's Memphis Depay for the Dutch. He does go for goal. It's straight into the wall, which does his job. Jumps well. Two and many getting his head on it. And Virgil van Dijk will send it out to the right-hand side. Here is Frimpong. Goal is here. 55 minutes played in Leipzig on Five Live and BBC Sounds. As Pong has it, tries a couple of step overs, there's two white shirts with him, one of them's Rabio. Pong tries to get it across but can't keep it in, the Dutch fans disagree, but it's a France goal kick, but you can see they know about the danger, don't they, and yeah. because he's shown that in glimpses in this game, Jeremy Frimpong 
They are doubling up on him very much so. France. Yeah. They have to know Vicky, don't they? Because he's, he's, so, he's so quick. He ran out of space there. He was getting closer and closer. Should have made his mind up. And by the time you've made your mind, you've had two or three touches. You've got one. Hernandez was there. And then you've got Rabio there as well. So you've got two on to one. You've got no space to go. Make your mind up quickly. Knock it and go. Play forward by Reinders. Good little spell this for the Dutch, but it's cleared away well by Primacano. Flag is up. And that will be offside against the Dutch. And I'm not sure France will really thank that whistle going because Turam was tussling with De Vrij as they race three, but France do have a free kick midway through their own half. So, plenty of chat about Kylian Mbappe. Do check out our podcast series. You can watch on iPlayer as well. Sporting Giants, Kylian Mbappe. Just search Mbappe on BBC Sounds or on iPlayer. And while you're there as well, Particularly if you're a fan of French football, you might remember this story. PSG women, remarkable feud between two players that rocked PSG's women's side and French football. Sports' strangest crimes. It is a remarkable story. It's well worth a listen. You can find episodes first on BBC Sounds. And of course, the Football Daily with all the reaction from the Euros throughout the tournament. Do download and subscribe as N'Golo Conte picks it up as France come once more towards the penalty area. Good block in the centre as Rabio made the run and it just did enough to put him off. And Rabiot's shot sails high into the blue-shirted France fans behind that goal. And again, I can still just see that <laughs> orange lifeboat-esque little patch of Dutch fans in that sea of blue still behaving themselves, still standing there with arms folded. I guess you know, anywhere to get a ticket. And if you have to stand in the, literally in yeah, the middle of all yeah. the France fans behind that goal, you're going <laughs> to do it. If they score, right, Dion, your job is to see how they react <laughs> and count how many stay in the stadium. I've got my glasses on. I can't see that far, actually, to be honest with <laughs> you. But right. listen, that chance there, Vicky, the chance came from Dembele going down the outside with his right foot, crosses it, and Rabio comes in at the far post. Listen, it's a half chance, but it's something in the box to attack. Netherlands with the ball, just outside their own penalty area. Verbruggen gesturing towards his players and looking for options. I mean, look, we gave it the big billing. It was the group game that everybody was most excited about when this draw was made. But this is the other side of it, isn't it? You've got two of the best sides in Europe, in the world, arguably, certainly for France. And they're going head to heads, and they know that if either one of them wins, yeah. they'll go through. France know if they win, they'll go through as group winners tonight. And of course, th there is a bit of caution on display. And, you know, we see it in the Premier League so often, don't we, when you have these huge matchups? Sometimes they just end up nil nil. Yeah, it's, it's, there is an element of don't, don't play that pass because it might get cut out, and then you change your game because. That's a decent pass, though, for France as N'Golo Conte picks it up. Left-hand side of the penalty area has the white shirts arriving. Chouameni now takes it 25 yards out. Goes for goal. And producer John is not alone in looking to the heavens here because that was remarkable. It, to be fair, it's, it's got a touch on the way through and it goes out for a France uh, over, even then going for goal from that position. Um, uh, that's, that's good. That, that was from the training ground. If I look like I'm shooting, get a deflection and get a throw in in the final third, Oh, look at that. That's an awful challenge. Awful. Here come France. Playing it forward to Rabio inside the centre circle, who plays it out to the right-hand side, and now a Pimicano. Lovely layoff by Dembele, and Kunde is off and away, up against his number five counterpart, Nathan Ake. A good defending by Reinders, but can't still have it over on that right-hand side with Dembele. Tries to squeeze it infield to Conte. Good sliding challenge by Javi Simons, but France have it once more. Netherlands really struggling to get the ball off the French at the moment as Apumacano comes forward. Midway through the Netherlands half. Just stops and checks and plays it back once more. And Saliba will send it forward now to Rabio. And again, the patience is there. This time from the pink booted Rabio, who goes for the one two now. And now they go through the gears. France, Turan picks it up, edge of the D. He's going to go for goal. Not too far away, I think Verbruggen had it covered and it's behind for a Dutch goal kick and it's still nil-nil and yeah, now gone. Yeah, he was uh, slightly off balance there to Ram as he, take, he took the shot, he drove into the uh, into the D itself, got 22 yards out and as he took the shot himself, he was off balance, he was never really in control of that but it's, it's a little better from 
from France. They've had the cross from Dembele. They've had the shot, shot from Turam. And the fans liked it. Here come the Dutch, driving towards halfway. Pulled forward by Memphis to play important header by Teo Fernandez, but it is picked up by Javis Simons. Oh, that was a really strong challenge by Chiu Many. Anthony Taylor's waiting to see what happens here. And in the end, he's given the free kick to France. And I'll let Leipzig Stadium tell you what it thinks of that. Certainly the Dutch are furious about that. And I have to say, it looked a strong challenge, Dion. We thought the whistle, well, I thought the whistle was going to go for a free kick <laughs> to the Netherlands. I don't know what the referee is going to give there. It's a coming together. Uh, I'm not even sure if, if it's a foul. Listen, there's a. I think he's actually Simons has actually rocked his left ankle as he goes for the challenge. But as he's on the floor, the ball gets stuck in behind his knees, and he curls his feet up as if to say, right, the ball's going nowhere. And uh, there's a few little digs in there as well. The referee said, hold it a minute. Let's calm this down. Yeah. To be fair, having seen that again, I think that is good refereeing by Anthony Taylor. The Dutch were furious, but as Dion says, it's just an awkward one, isn't it? Is, it? it is. It is an awkward coming together. But Simons, thankfully, he's up to his feet and we get things underway with a France free kick. As Pumacano has it midway through his own half, squares it to Arsenal's William Saliba. And now Pumacano once again. Now Kunde sends it down the right hand side. Dembele's making that run. He's really stretching Nathan Ake. In this second half, Usman Zembele, he's done well. He's won the corner to France. Yeah, he has. Ake does that well. I mean, that, that raising noise levels has come from Dembele taking the corner. He's just said to his fans, come on, I want some more noise from you, please. And they've responded out to the corner. So the white shirts dotted amongst the orange ones inside the penalty area. It's a wicked delivery, but again, Van Dijk wins the header. He's done that pretty much every single time. France have swung set pieces in. They swing it in again, and the header over by Chouameni. Well, that time he didn't get there. France recycled it well, but the header sails over the bar of Bart Verbruggen. Isn't it, isn't it strange if you just cross the ball, you get chances? Put the ball in the box, give you up, um, your, your opponent something to defend. A couple of chances now. France have had a couple of half chances because they've got into good areas. They haven't refused to cross. And this Netherlands defence, slightly on the back foot now, making sure that they don't lose any of those players in the box. The Tricolors waving around Leipzig Stadium once again as Denzel Dumfries is dispossessed by Rabio. That's good play by Rabio, and two and many can bring it forward. Here is Griezmann on the halfway line. Turns and sends it out to the left-hand side, and Angola Conte who lays it off to two many. He has scored three goals for France. The Real Madrid man now squares it once more to Rabio outside the centre circle. The Tricolores wave once again around that little orange patch of Netherlands fans. I wonder if any of the France fans have tried handing them a Tricolore and saying, <laughs> you know, well, we've got the vertical, reds, white and blue, you've got the horizontal. If you just turn it to one side, you could just almost hold it up. Nobody will know, nobody will know. Here is Teo Hernandez down the left hand side, midway through the Dutch half as we approach the midway point of the second half and still it's goalless between Netherlands and France here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Here is Chouameni just outside the centre circle, sends it out to the right hand side and up Meccano. Remind you, you can watch this match on BBC One, Steve Wilson and Jermaine Genus. You can select our commentary as well, which is synced up with the pictures if you'd like to through iPlayer and the red button. Saliba has it on the right hand side. Here is Chouameni. Who would you say is on top at the moment, Dion? Yeah, I think France at the moment are just having the, the better of the, the, of, the, of the possession, creating a few more chances, getting players forward, getting to good areas, and actually putting something in the box or shots from the edge of the box as well. They're getting closer. No changes for either side yet as well. You wonder when Ronald Koeman and Didier Deschamps will turn to their benches. And of course for France, will Kylian Mbappe make an appearance as Hernandez? Squares it back to Saliba and now picks it up and finds Chouameni. Dembele on the turn, finds Chouameni once again. Griezmann almost put in his way, but that's a lovely back heel. France sweeping into the penalty area. Conte, Griezmann can't find the finish. Brilliant save by Verbruggen. But again, a close range opportunity for Antoine Griezmann. And he can't take advantage, he can't sort his feet out. You've got to praise for Bruggen there, though, Dion. Yeah, listen, really, really good stuff from France. But again, the finishing Griezmann just can't sort his feet out on the far, at the far post. Keeper makes a fantastic save with his foot. 
to put it out for a corner. But listen, when you're in those when you're in those positions, you have to score goals. Really, really good position again. I thought Kante could have could have um, could have shot as well from eight yards out. Here comes the corner, swung in from the right-hand side. It's over the head of Rabio and cleared away by Shelton. Yeah, Kante's been shooting from 25 yards, 30 yards, but <laughs> <laughs> not from that sort of range. And as Dion says, maybe you should have done. As Chiumeni is going to drive for goal. It's cleared away by Ake, and now Frimpong might be able to counter. Challenge by Dembele. Anthony Taylor says he got the ball, and it did look like a good challenge as well as France come forward. They have the momentum at the moment. The Dutch can't get out of their own half. Nil-nil here on Five Live and BBC Sounds in Leipzig at the Euros as Rabio allows the ball to run under his feet and then controls and plays it forward to Angolo Conte. Nice little one-two, Rabio forward Griezmann. Conte once again, nice footwork inside the area. Shot driven in and claimed by Bart Verbruggen. There's Dembele over on the far side, more of a cross than a shot in truth. But that was some lovely link-up play by France. Yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's Griezmann again, isn't it? It's... it's, it's... Um, Dembele getting the ball back, working really hard in, in defensive role and then getting it into Griezmann in that centre forward position. A few little one-twos, getting it out wide. This is better from France, they're moving the ball quicker. I said in, in comms in the first half, if you can move the ball quicker, you'll create chances. Chiram's won the ball, illegally so, says Anthony Taylor and the Netherlands have a free kick midway inside their own half. There's a huge trickle all that was just being waved away to our left. Drifts down in disappointment. Nil-nil between the Netherlands and France. Plenty of action coming up for you tomorrow from the Euros on Five Live once more. Georgia against the Czech Republic gets things underway at two, followed by Turkey against Portugal and then Belgium against Romania finishes things off as the Netherlands give the ball away. Here is Griezmann. Chiram making the run. Griezmann still going. Finds Dembele. Right-hand side of the penalty area. Dembele might go for goal. Turns back as Kunde there in support. Dembele does go for goal. And it flies narrowly over the bar. But they are really building up ahead of steam here, France. They're doing well. They're, they're picking the right passes now. They're getting the right people on the ball. Lovely little ball from Griezmann as well. Dembele one-on-one -on -one with Ake. Twisting him left, twisting him right. Faking to shoot. We know what he's like on his left foot. Face the shoe with his left, comes on his right, so you're not quite sure if you should dive in or not dive in. But if you do that and you find a gap, you have to hit the target. He's done it two or three times now and he's ballooned it over the bar. The Bergen has the ball inside the Dutch penalty area. The Netherlands goalkeeper all in green, plays it out to Shelton, but France are pressing around the box and they go back to Verbrugge in the Netherlands. This is a good spell for France, probably their best of the game. France, who have reached the final in three of the last four major tournaments. They won the World Cup in 2018. They were runners-up at Euro 2016 and at the World Cup in 2022. The only exception to that was their last 16 exit in penalties at Euro 2020. Here come the Dutch into the penalty area. A little back heel by Teo Hernandez on the edge of his own six-yard box, picked up by Frimpong, just outside the area. Now worked out to the left-hand side as Cody Gakpo finds Memphis Depay on the turn. Brilliant save, Banyon, but the follow Celebrations inside Leipzig Stadium, which is a sea of orange and flying beers all around us. Xavi Simons with a low drive, but Anthony Taylor, the referee, has his arm in the air and the flags up. As the goal celebration music starts, the Netherlands celebrations are curtailed. And how many times do we say this, Dion? Now we wait for VAR. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, they're saying, is there interference with the, with the keeper? I yeah, the, the question here, Dumfries, as the shot comes in, is in an offside position. He's right next to the goalkeeper, Mike Magnon. Now, he's not in Magnon's eye line, but the question is, does he impede Magnon coming to his left to stop or attempt to save that shot from Javi Simons? which was a rocket driven low into the back of the net. So now we have the check. What do we think, Dion? It's what these yes. Manion kind of, <clears throat> kind of makes a movement towards it to try and save it. He, he can't really get there because Dumfries is there, but is he really going to be able to save that anyway? Listen, if, if, listen, for me, the keeper has to dive if he's going to make 
I mean, I'm not sure if this is right or wrong, but he's not in the eye line, so I'm thinking to myself, he's not, he's not tried to dive the keeper. You know, I'm not sure how this is going to go. I don't know. The flag was so late as well, and we're not quite sure. The celebrations were going on. We, we didn't see... The, I think the line's been pulled, pulled the referee over, so the officials chatted, and then, yeah, he's standing there with his hand to his ear. The yeah, referee. He's, he's, he's having a listen. He may go to the screen because this is possibly subjective. Of course, if it's a question of whether Dumfries is offside or not, in terms of where his position is on the field, then it's subjective. But he's clearly in an offside position but does he become active that's the key yeah, question yeah. And, and that is subjective so Virgil van Dijk and Antoine Griezmann as the captains are coming over to talk to Anthony Taylor real tension inside the stadium here in Leipzig he didn't Javi touch the ball, did he? thought he could celebrate he doesn't know he doesn't touch the ball but I guess the question is does he impede what Mannion the goalkeeper is able to do stop him playing the ball by his position this, this is you know it, it is taking a while. We've got a sign up on the screen that says, you know, that they're checking. Let's see. Anthony Taylor is still having a conversation with Virgil van Dijk. Griezmann's been called over again. It's one of these. If VAR can't decide, A, you've got the argument of do you actually just say, right, you know, on-field decision, which we think was offside, although it was very late, but the flag eventually did go up. But also, do you need Anthony Taylor to be called over? No, offside. Offside is given... And the Dutch fans are furious and Javi Simons has his celebrations wow. curtailed. Wow, Dion Dublin. Yeah, that's... Uh, oh, hang me. on, hang on, oh, hang on. Oh, 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 it's <laughs> oh, my goodness, I thought we were Gosh. going to have controversy there because they hadn't restarted. And Anthony Taylor looked as though he was about to hear something else from VAR. Oh, I can't take it, Dion. All this VAR drama. Right, good spot. It is stopped for a triple substitution for the Dutch and Virgil van Dijk is still talking to Anthony Taylor about that disallowed goal as we see another replay here. I mean, I guess yeah. that is the question. Dumfries is right next to Manion. He is, he is, but I don't think Does he's Does he stop Manion being hindering. able to go to his left and absolutely stop that? Absolutely not, absolutely not. The, ref, the, the keeper's actually moved to his left as far as he can possibly go before the ball goes past him. Manion's never getting there, never getting there. Yes, he may be in the eye line. Yes, he was in an off offside position, but I don't think he hindered the keeper one bit. Well, what a 60 seconds for Javi Simons. He thought he put the Netherlands in front. He hasn't, and he's now been subbed for Jorginho Wijnaldum. Shouten, who's on a yellow card, has also come off for Veerman. And Geertruda has come on for Jeremy Frimpong. So, what drama. Suddenly came to life there, didn't it, Dion? Well, it was... Oh, dear. It's all going off now, look. It is. Saliba shepherds it back to Mike Magnon. Now they're asking for an offside, and belatedly the flag does go up. Memphis Depay is not happy. Saliba got there anyway, and France have a free kick. A bit messy that was, wasn't it? A little five minutes of trying to sort things out, get things back to normal again. Let's get the ball on the grass and let's start playing some football, because France were in the ascendancy until that goal was scored and they've got to try and grab the initiative back now France if they really want to go and secure this group so another VAR talking point as Rabiot has it just outside his own penalty area I think that the officials will say that the presence of Dumfries is enough to, to stop Magnon being able to play the ball but it is going to be another talking point We've had a few of them at these Euros already as Virgil van Dijk clears away. But, you know, it's gone, Dion. They've made the decision with a long VAR check. What the Dutch have to do now is just get their heads back in the game. Yeah, that, and that's the one. Regroup, go again. Let's listen. That's gone now. And what it is as well, there would have been some energy used during those celebrations as well. So they've really got to get themselves back down to earth, back in the mindset of the game and make sure that you don't let it affect you. Too much on that ball for Griezmann, and it's all the way through with Bart Verbruggen, who prepares to take this goal kick for the Netherlands. Just how hard is it to, to do that as Dembele goes off France, making a substitution? Kingsley Coman coming on, and it's a double change as well. And Marcus Turam is replaced by France's record goal scorer, Olivier Giroud. And listen to the roar from those France fans. 37 years of age he says he will retire from international football after these Euros and if he nets he will become the oldest goal scorer for France out of Euros he's already their oldest goal scorer at a World Cup he's their oldest player what a remarkable man he is unbelievable and he's still got great hair as well hasn't he great hair doesn't move 
looks beautiful and he can score goals. So, still no Kylian Mbappe, still goalless, despite Xavi Simons thinking that he put the Netherlands ahead. Ruled out after a lengthy VAR check, Denzel Dumfries deemed to have been interfering with play due to his proximity, not in the eye line, but right next to where Mike Magnon might have tried to dive had Dumfries not been there. As the ball always just falls under the foot of Bartford Bruggen, but nobody in yeah. the white shirt is anywhere near the penalty area and, and he can play it out calmly to Stefan de Vrij. You know what as well, when, when um, goalkeepers and players do that now, a lot of them are stopping the ball with their studs. It's a very small part of the foot and with the grass, the ball moves quite a lot. It deviates. So if you take your eye off the ball, you can actually miss the ball completely. That's what happened to um, the keeper there. He took his eye off the ball, trying to stop it with his studs. What happened to controlling it properly with your instep a big part of your foot no mistakes made 14 minutes plus out of time to play still in Leipzig on 5 Live and BBC Sounds it's Netherlands nil France nil the Netherlands with the ball just outside their own penalty area as Didier Deschamps watches on he has won seven of his eight games against the Netherlands as France manager. That's more than against any other nation. But they could have been behind here. Were it not for that VAR disallowed goal for Javi Simons as Geertruder sends it over to Virgil van Dijk who lifts the long ball over the top. It's cleared away at the back but not effectively enough and Wijnaldum goes down, wins a free kick. 30 yards out, central position for the Netherlands. Yeah, Kante getting back there, helping out. Brings down Wijnaldum. Just catches him with his knee, knee on knee. Wijnaldum just come on. Old head, experience, he'll be keeping the ball. So once again, the Dutch fans begin their slow clap. That wall of orange away to our right-hand side. And set pieces haven't provided all of the opportunities for both sides in this game, but they have provided some decent ones. Too many of them have gone into the wall. This is 30 yards out, central position, Memphis Depay with that white headband that has a golden number 10 emblazoned on it. His shirt number for the Dutch stands over it. Looks as though he might go for goal. Instead, he chips it in. Van Dijk's there. Teo Hernandez wins the header. That's behind for a Dutch corner. And that was more of a training ground move. Yeah, it was. It didn't quite get it spot on, but he looked like he was going to shoot. Hernandez stayed live because Van Dijk was there around the uh, around the outside. Lots of cups in the in the corner, being kicked off before the corner's taken. Yeah, he's having to clear the cups away here, Jerry Veerman, and the cups are there from when the Dutch fans threw them at Antoine Griezmann. As a change is made. Before this corner, Memphis Depay is off and Wout Weghorst, who so often makes the difference from the bench for the Dutch, is on. Looking to use this height from this set piece as it's swung in from this near side. Van Dijk was in there, it's cleared away by Primacano. Flag's gone up anyway on this near side. Given us a free kick to France inside their own penalty area. Well, Wout Weghorst, we know what he can do. He came off the bench to score the winner in their opener against Poland. He scored more goals at major tournaments as a substitute than any other player wow. for the Netherlands. And he is a tall figure to aim for. Standing there in his bright pink boots and he'll give that France defence something different to think about. Depay, much shorter player, very skillful in terms of how he takes the ball and brings others into play. Veghorst can hold it up well, he's got a good finish on him. And of course has that dangerous height from set pieces. Yeah, they'll just be looking for him to just stay up top now and just let us get the ball to you. You you bring it down and, and get us up the field. Obviously, set pieces are going to be a problem as well for France now. But I'm just trying to think who he scored that goal against when he was in the wall and they played it to his feet. And then there was a... Argentina, wasn't was it? Was it Argentina? You know, that, that, that might still be in the minds of the Netherlands um, team thinking, hold oh, on a minute, let's use that again. It worked last time. Yeah, it was so clever, wasn't it? A brilliant free kick routine. As N'Golo Conte comes forward, little skip over the outstretched leg of Joey Veerman. And the Netherlands are coming forward now, but that ball ahead of Denzel Dumfries just had a little bit too much on it. And France will come forward down this left-hand side once again with 
Here, Trudor coming on. Dumfries has gone up to right wing for now. And we'll look to launch attacks down that right-hand side as Veerman picks it up. Ten minutes plus out of time to play here in Leipzig on Five Live and BBC Sounds. It's still goalless between Netherlands and France. Netherlands having a goal ruled out in this second half after a lengthy VAR check for offside as here Trudor plays it forward to Reinders. And now out to this right-hand side and ends on Dumfries and back once more to here Trudor as again the Dutch fans around the stadium. I'd say they're just probably outnumbering the French fans who might make their voices heard here as they win possession on halfway but Griezmann just slows the momentum of the attack. Here is Kunde now down the right-hand side and Kingsley Coman approaching the penalty area. Plays it back once more to Chiuamene and Kunde now once again. Chiuamene lifts the ball into the area. Giroud was in there and tried the little back heel on the edge of the six-yard box and it spins away from goal. Well, of course, they have the height with Giroud as well, but we've seen him score some absolutely delicious yes. goals in his career overhead. Kicks, scorpion kicks, tried a little flick there, but got it all wrong. Yeah, but that's that's it now. As a, as a as a player for France, if you know he's on the pitch, you can cross it almost anywhere near him. He'll get something on it. He'll, he'll occupy the defenders. His, his touch is incredible. He's got a sweet left foot as well. And he will now make Virgil van Dijk and De Vrij stay there. They won't be wandering off. They know they've got somebody who's just a centre forward to mark now. Pin that orange wall of the defence back and see if you can create something. Both sets of fans raising their voices around Leipzig Stadium, which is a sea of blue to our left and orange to our right. This one still, with eight minutes plus out of time to play, so finely in the balance. I mean, have to say Dion as well. Look, you know, a win for either side takes them through. If France win, they go through as group winners tonight. But a point of peace, I mean, they are well yeah. set going into those final games, having won their first two games. No, I would agree. I would agree. They, and, they, and I think there's an element of that as well. We spoke about it that nobody really wants to make a mistake. If it's a worldie from 25 yards, you can't do anything about it. But now you can just tell by the concentration on the passes. Make sure it finds a teammate. You don't get any passes astray. So here goes here Trudor. Out to the left-hand side and... Manchester City's Nathan Ake, but the ball forward is cleared away by France. Netherlands pick it up, though, with Beghorst, but Reinders, loose pass, and Dumfries won't reach it, and Rabio now is over the halfway line. There are some tired legs, some tired passes that we're seeing out on the pitch now in Leipzig, where the temperature is still in the low 20s. It is a, a warm evening. The sky now dark above us here in Germany and the red spotlights illuminating the white roof of this stadium. And as your eyes travel down below, it's blue and orange that covers the seats here. Both sets of fans hoping for a late winner, some late drama as Chiuameni picks it up midway through the Dutch half, sends it out to the left-hand side and Teo Hernandez up against Denzel Dumfries, who's back there defending. And Chiuameni will send it back once more to William Saliba does feel Dion that there's going to be one more big chance yeah, yeah, I think in the final right. seven minutes or so plus out of time. I think you're right. I think there'll be a good two or three more chances to be honest with you Vicky. I think there's um, one for each side coming. Here are France midway through the Netherlands half. Nil-nil. We haven't had a goal to score at the Euro since the group stages of Euro 2020. Don't let us down Netherlands France. Let's have some late drama, as Rabio has it. Again, it's just a wall of orange in front of them, and France are passing sideways and trying to pick the lock of this well-organised and drilled and disciplined Dutch defence. Komen comes down the right-hand side, but there's nowhere to go. Sends it back to Epimacano. Netherlands so deep now, though, as Wekor steps up and tries to put some pressure on Saliba, just outside the centre circle. Epimacano has it now, sends it forward to Komen once more. A few jeers and whistles from the Dutch fans as Homan under pressure sees that ball played out on the left-hand side by Liverpool's Cody Gakpo and it will be a throw to France and we have five minutes plus out of time left to play, Dion. Yeah, it's 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 really slow at the moment. France going from left wing all the way through midfield to the right wing as well. Round the, uh, the orange sort of set. 4-4, 1 one at the moment. Netherlands have set up in that way and they just can't break it down at the moment, France. Orange is the chant you can hear as Veerman wins the ball. 
France wanted the free kick for that. They're not going to get it. And now the Dutch spring forward, but Denzel Dumfries can't get there ahead of William Saliba. And Teo Hernandez will pick up the ball. But they did really commit the orange shirts forward there, didn't they, Dion? Back in position now defensively. Yeah, yeah. They, they do, though. They do it really well. They look incredibly fit, the Netherlands. A few weary legs in the middle of the park, though. But you've, this is where you need your concentration. This is where you've just got to stay on it. Because, you know, if any lapses in concentration could mean that you lose this game. And that's what they don't want to happen. So the captains have got to play a role now. Here goes Kunde down the right-hand side for France. It's all France at the moment in terms of possession. But they're really struggling to make inroads into, or even towards, really, the Netherlands penalty area. What can Teo Hernandez do? Plays it out to the left-hand side. And N'Golo Conte chips the ball into the area, looking for Giroud, who heads it down, looking for Griezmann. Very important interception at the back by the Dutch, because that was almost a lovely yeah. link-up play, and the ball goes out of play for a France so that was so intelligent from Giroud he knew he was under pressure he knew a header on goal would be so difficult so he just knocked it down trying to find Griezmann advantage played here as Teo Hernandez plays the ball into the area Griezmann on the edge of the box Koundé will pick it up right hand side lashes the ball across it's cleared away by Van Dijk helped on towards the halfway line and then Chiumeni is penalised and the Netherlands have a free kick Dion Dublin yeah good period of play for France there I mean lovely ball from um, from Conte to, to Giroud he just gets in behind the defence and I think Rabio gets brought down I think he's still on the floor going down the uh, the left hand side the referee played on and then they crossed the ball in the box nearly got to the end of that Griezmann tried to create something as well so it's really all in um, Netherlands uh, box at the moment Rabio's still down looks in a bit of discomfort yeah the medical staff are being gestured on it was a collision with Dumfries Anthony Taylor played advantage in the end France couldn't make anything of it but Rabiot now sitting gingerly up as <laughs> I'll tell you what the France medical staff aren't really busting a gut to get over there either are they <laughs> I think Dion I think I could be wrong but I think everyone's quite happy with the draw yeah I, I think you could be right there you could be right there that's possibly the slowest medical staff I think running on I mean, it's, it's near, the weekend's nearly over now. It took him that long. Wow. But he's OK. He'll be OK. He'll be fine. Yeah, any slower, they would have been going backwards. So we see Arsene Wenger in the crowd here at the Leipzig Stadium as Rabio is eventually up to his feet. And again, just keep an eye on the France bench. It's, it's right over on the far side. There was a little bit more movement. No, surely no. not. Surely no, not. well, that was it. I was just about to say to you, and, and it's so far away... It's hard to spot who is stretched and ready to come on, but I'm sure if it was Mbappe, the cameras would have found him. I was just about to say, Dion, two minutes was out of time to play. Pointless. He's not coming on, no is pointless. he? Is he even fit? I mean, he's on the bench, he's got the mask, but, you know, there are mind games aplenty. And, and like we say, having won their first game apiece, the Netherlands and France, you know, a, a draw is not a bad result at all. They go into their final games. France face Poland and the Netherlands, Austria. But France going for the winner here. Rabiot's ball into the area. Shocking delivery right across the six-yard box. Griezmann will pick it up on the far side. He's been forced out of the penalty area. France have on a free kick over on the far side. Kunde going down. They're not going to get it. Ball's out of play for a throw to the Netherlands. All it needed was a delivery, Dion. <laughs> I don't understand tonight. Rabiot is, is, is 14 yards out, slightly on the angle. He's got to take the shot on. There's a lot of space to hit. He's got time to put it onto his left foot and hit the target with the pace. He tries to find someone coming in the box. If the more you pass, the more chance you've got of your attack breaking down. If you've got half a chance, take it. Don't try and get a full chance. Take the half chance. Well, we're just seeing now a shot of Kylian Mbappe on the sidelines. He's still got his tracksuit top on. He's not happy. He's waving his hands up in the air. You wonder what he feels about not being brought on. He posted on social media, without risks, there is no victory. Wednesday, but it's up to his manager, Didier Deschamps, and we don't know, you know, what conversations they've had behind the scenes as well. Certainly leaving him off the bench would have been a, a big clue. <laughs> well, a big clue, more than a clue, Absolutely. a big reveal to the Netherlands. So even if he's not fit, he might as well put him on. But into the final 60 seconds of normal time. Might be a little bit more added in the second half, added a few stoppages. France coming forward once again, it's Komen over on that far side, it's still goalless here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Pumacano has it, sends it to William Saliba. At the moment, if there's a team that's going to score in terms of pressure, it looks like it'll be France. As we enter five minutes of added time, but the Netherlands potentially dangerous on the counter. 
as Saliba squares it to her from the corner. Again, the orange shirts dropping deep. Nil-nil here in Leipzig Stadium at the Euros. As Rabio, who has recovered from that awkward tumble with Dumfries, sends it over to the right-hand side. And now for Meccano, Ale Le Bleu is the chance inside the stadium as Kunde picks it up, lays it off. Kante trying to get the shot away. Brilliant block by Veghorst, who is coming back. That is outstanding defending from the Netherlands, number nine. <laughs> yeah, brilliant getting back and helping his team out there, getting a the block on Conte just as he was about to shoot. This is the danger now. This is the danger. We're into added time. France have won seven of the last eight games against the Netherlands, looking to cause more heartbreak for the Dutch. It's Griezmann with the corner. He swings it in deep. It's a big punch by Verbruggen to the edge of the penalty area. France hesitating, looking who might get on the end of it. It's Wijnaldum in the end. And Veerman then is dispossessed, dallied on the ball, looking for an option. And France come forward again down the right-hand side. Griezmann and now Koundé. Lays it off as the ball is swung in, powerfully headed away by Stefan de Bruy, out of the penalty area to the right-hand side, and Dumfries gets there, really good defending, uses his body, gets there ahead of Chouameni. Ball goes out, though, for a France throw. He's not happy with that, Dumfries. He felt he could have had a free kick there, but France have the throw. 90 seconds gone of the minimum five added on. We're still waiting yeah. for that big chance, Dion. It's going to come along. There'll be one more chance for one of these teams. It's looking like it could be France because they've had more of the ball, and they're really throwing players forward now. Hernandez with the ball into the area, headed away by Nathan Ake, important header as well because Komen was right behind him, Kunde wins it back but can't stop the ball from going out of play, good pressure from Liverpool's Cody Gakpo and the ball is out of play for a Netherlands throw and let's just see how quickly the Dutch take this and as again <laughs> the camera's found Mbappe, he's not going to be coming on, he's got that tracksuit top on, how much more of a part will he play? in this tournament he's on the bench after that broken nose against Austria he's got the mask made but there will be questions I'm sure asked of Didier Deschamps in his post-match press conference about just how fit yes. Kylian Mbappe is I mean you, you can even if he is able to play you can understand why Deschamps hasn't brought him on as we say it's, it's not a bad result at all for either of these sides both be on four points they will strongly fancy their chances of getting through but a win for either would have wrapped it up tonight, would have sent France to his group winners, but it's goalless as the Netherlands have the ball just inside their own penalty area. And now again, you know, it's, it's the same speed as the France medical team who came on, you know, a few moments ago, isn't it? There's no closing down from France. And you can hear the cheers and whistles. And again, it almost sounds like they're coming from around the stadium because I think fans on both sides perhaps are a little bit frustrated because, you know, you want to see your team go for it. But in the cold light of day, as opposed to the darkness here in the skies above us in Leipzig, point's not a bad result at all against opponents for both of these of this calibre. But the Dutch are coming forwards. Perhaps one last chance for them. Dumfries with the delivery into the area. Poor delivery. Kunde did, though, get his header on it. Might not have had to. Hasn't got out for a corner, though. Goes out for a throw deep in Dutch territory. And Nathan Ake is over to take it. Yeah, they're not, they're not sprinting. They're not jogging. They're walking to get the throw. They'll try, if they can, though, to get one more crossing. Because the big fella's in the box. There might be one more chance in it for them. 90 seconds of added time to play. It's goalless, but the Netherlands have the ball just outside the France penalty area. They've lost it, though. It's cleared away by Kingsley Komen. Sent forwards by Van Dijk. And then just the... Lack of combination down that left-hand side. Gakpo couldn't control, might have been offside anyway, and the ball is behind for a France goal kick. And we're into the final minute of added time. Yeah, there'll be no, there'll be no pressure. I mean, look at that. Veg horse there, he just ran to the halfway line. There's no pressure on the ball at all. Get compact. Don't let them through us. Keep them there in front of us. And no mistakes. France passing it around their back four as they advance over the halfway line. Again, the Dutch with those orange shirts back defending every player behind the ball as Apumakano takes it over the halfway line and then lays it off to Kunde, plays it forward now to Angolo Conte and back to Apumakano once more. You do think, you know, just launch it long. You've got 30 seconds to play, you're dominating possession. Might as well see if you can find Olivier Giroud. Will France do that? 15 seconds now to play as Chiumeni sends it forward. That should be dealt with by Hitrida. And it's dealt with. Hernandez got a toe on it but can't stop it going out. And it will be a goal kick to the Netherlands, and that will almost be that deal. Yeah, I'm thinking as soon as that ball's in the air, the referee will blow his whistle, and honours will stay even. 
So, Bart Verbruggen has this goal kick to take and around us, the fans, particularly of the Dutch, away to our right, raise their voices and cheer because their side has been under more pressure in these final 10 minutes. They could have scored the winner in the second half, was it? What? Not ruled out by VAR. But there is the full-time whistle, and I think that's the most anticlimactic full-time whistle that I've ever seen. All the players <laughs> kind of just drift towards the referee. They can't even be bothered to shake hands with each other. Now they are. That is a bizarre end to a game, and the game has almost played for the last 10 minutes like that. There are some discussions going on, Komen and Kunde between them, and now they go through the handshakes. But it, it just seems like everybody's quite happy to get out of here with a point and go home and head into the final group game. Yeah, it just felt for the last... I don't know, five, eight minutes that they were, they were all happy with this result. Nobody wanted to take any risks. Nobody really wanted to cross the ball either in case there was a break on against uh, your side. So it sort of, so I don't know, it sort of dwindled away this game. There was good bits of quality, but I expected a lot more from both of these sides. On chances, France should have won it. So no Kylian Mbappe off the bench, no goals, honours even. And it finishes in Leipzig. Netherlands nil, France nil. Kelly. Thank you, Vicky. Dion, I hesitate to call this a bad game, largely because at halftime I said I was quite enjoying <laughs> it. But it was an eminently sensible game, a very uninspired yes, yes. game. It was, it was good players doing what they needed to do in order to progress to the knockout stages of the tournament, which, given the Netherlands face Austria and France face Poland in the final round of group matches, it's more than likely that they'll make it. Yeah, listen, I, I think they knew as well. I think the players knew, got to a certain point in the game, when you get to 70 minutes, you think, right, let's not lose it and let's just keep doing what we're doing. And they kind of, they can't, it looked like they agreed to this uh, this result. Nil-nil, not a very good game, probably one of the worst games I've seen in the competition so far, unfortunately, with all that talent on show. However, they've done what they needed to do. They've not lost. Either side's not lost, they'll be happy with that.